So it says, show that the time-dependent Schrodinger equation for zero potential cannot be satisfied by a real value, the trigonometric function. Oh, uh, yeah. So if we were trying to write down a form of equation for a plane wave using real function, this is how you'd write it, um, right? And the point of this question is that um, um, you actually need uh, complex valued functions in order to describe uh, the quantum mechanical wave function in all cases. So, so let's go through the tutorial and see <laughs> that that is the case. Um, so it says, um, yeah, uh, let me just write things out so that I really shouldn't have erased it, but no. let me write it out so that I have something to refer to. Um, so this is the Schrodinger equation, minus h bar squared over 2m, uh, the second order partial derivative in x is equal to i h bar and the first order partial derivative in time. And I'm trying to evaluate is psi of x t equal to a cosine of kx minus omega t plus v, a solution. Okay, so for the part A, it says evaluate the partial derivatives um, on the left-hand side uh, uh, and simplify it. Okay, and I'm going to not write down every single step, but point out some of the things that's going to happen. As I apply the first position derivative, I'm going to get, um, so cosine will become minus a sine, that's the derivative of the outside. And then as I take the derivative of the inside, I'm going to get a factor of k out. Okay, that's first derivative. When I take the second derivative, it's going to be the derivative of a minus a sine, which will become minus a cosine, and I'll get another factor of k out. So after I take the two partial derivatives, um, yeah, and here it says write out in the form of given over. So when I, um, so this is what it's gonna be. I'm gonna have the, all the factors from before, a minus uh, a, h bar um, squared over 2n, that's the factor in front. And the factors that I got from taking the derivative, that's gonna be minus k squared. And you know, the, the uh, it says simplify, but the system doesn't force me to simplify. Like minus and minus, I don't have to cancel that. And it said to express the function in terms of the very uh, representation. So I'm gonna write, uh, okay, it's gonna be a times uh, cosine of kx minus omega t, oops, uh, omega t. And I think it understands implicit differentiation. So in differentiation, in implicit multiplication. So omega t, it, I think it'll understand it as product. Syntax error. Oh, oh, <laughs> evaluate the partial derivatives. So I, I don't need this uh, thing on the, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I needed to do. Um, okay, so that's my partial derivative. I think that's right, yeah. <laughs> um, it says evaluate the partial derivative on the right hand side of the time dependent Schrodinger equation for the given psi. Okay, so I'm staring at this again. And when I take the derivative with respect to t, the outside is the same. So I get minus sine. And then I take the derivative of the inside. So I get my uh, minus omega. So it's going to be um, the factor in front of the function is going to be plus. Uh, omega times a, and then it's going to be sine, uh, sine of kx minus omega t plus v. And that should be graded as correct. And this is the careful examination that uh, uh, in direction here is talking about. So your left-hand side is going to be something that's going to be a function of cosine and whatever coefficients there are. Your right hand side is a function um, that has a sign in it and whatever coefficients there are. There's no way something that's a function, cosine function on the left hand side 
is equal to a function that's a sign on the right hand side. And this is the important part for all values of x and t, which means the equality might hold a certain values. That's where the functions would cross intersections, but it's not going to hold that all values of x and t. So, so this is demonstrating that this proposed a plane wave solution is not a solution to the Schrodinger equation. And uh, yeah, and what you need is, um, yeah. So, so this is, I think I go over this in lecture. Um, this is really why uh, you need uh, complex functions because um, yeah. <laughs> functions. I don't know what more I can say other than that. Oh, yeah. so, and, you know, starting with the real value of the functions, you can build up to something that would be a solution. But then when you've done that, uh, you've kind of, uh, there's no way to do it without introducing complex numbers. <laughs>